A brand new Terrorid Spotlight event is now live in Scarlet and Violet, giving you the opportunity to get very quick and easy terror shards and level up candies in your game. As we head into this preparation period for the Mew and Mewtwo Terrorid event that will be dropping on the 1st of September, we have another new Spotlight Terrorid event dropping right now in Scarlet and Violet that's going to help you get the items that you're going to need to train up your Pokemon that bit easier. The new event that is dropped is a show of supporters and this event will be running from the 18th of August until the 31st of August, the day before that Mewtwo Terrorid event goes live in game. So this event will again be hosting the Blissey. We've just had the Prepare the Offense Spotlight Terrorid events that included the Scissor and the Hydreigon End and this one is replacing it featuring the Hatterene Grimmsnarl and again featuring Blissey, which gives out a crazy amount of item drops throughout each of these Pokemon when you beat them. The show supporters will feature just three Pokemon. Of course, we start off with the Hatterene. These will all be five star Terror Raid events, all set to level 75. The Terror types will be random. Hidden abilities are possible on these Pokemon. And we'll start off with the Hatterene. It will have Mystic Fire, Psychic, Disarming Voice, Dark Pulse, and additional moves of Psychic Terrain and Calm Mind. And the item drops that you're going to see for the Hatterene are going to be a bunch of level up candies. You're going to get the vitamins as well as the Terror Shards and a bunch of other really useful items, including mints, ability capsules, TMs, and high cost items that you'll be able to sell for cash in the games. The Grim Snarl, of course, is going to be a random terror type as well moves it's going to have are going to be spirit break light screen full surrender play rough with additional moves of reflect and bulk up and again giving you those really good high cost items those level up candies large and excel candies the vitamins the terror shards rare candies mints and also the ability patches tms and some other high cost items but then we get on to the juice of the event it is the blissies that will be appearing through this event again all random terror typings and it, the only drawback is it's really hard to to distinguish which Spotlight Terror Raid events are Blissey and which are the Grimmsnarl and the Hatterene. You can't tell until you go into the den itself, but you can see the item drops from the Blisseys are going to be predominantly going to be those Terror Shards. We'll get level up candies alongside the Blisseys as well. So you can see roughly for the normal Blisseys that you're going to be getting, you're going to be getting around 22 to 20 Terror Shards per Terror Raid, which is a crazy amount of Terror Shards making it very easy to kind of accumulate those terror shards that you need to change terror typings on your pokemon pretty easy and along with that you're going to get a lot of level up candies as well but you might hit the jackpot with one of these blissies where you can get up to around 65 terror shards from one raid beating the blissey and literally we've got some builds that we're going to feature later on in this video where you can do the blissey in literally two turns no matter what the typing of the blissey is and you can see the amount of terror shards that you from these two particular blissey raids and it is kind of random if you hit the jackpot with them or not i did a raid earlier and i got 68 terror shards just from that one raid so it's an extremely good event for just collecting these harder to get items great one that will be running for a pretty long extended period from the 18th till the 31st so two weeks this will be running for until that Mewtwo Terror Raid event drops on the 1st of September. So to access this event in your game, you are gonna need to come down to your Poker Portal. Make sure you are connected to the internet and then come down to your Mystery Gifts and check Poker Portal news. Once you've done this, it'll come up with this option here. It'll show you that you have updated your dens. And then when you come onto your map, you'll be able to identify these spotlight terror raids. They will have like a white glowing aura around them. So you can just pick one out and then head over to it and take it on. The recommended builds for Blissey, there are many things that are going to be good, but things that do cover every single Blissey pretty effectively and pretty quickly as well to make farming a lot easier are going to be two Pokemon, Ursaluna and Ursaring. So if you haven't got Ursaluna because of Pokemon Legends Arceus, then you can rely on Ursaring for this. As always, all of the builds will be down in the description below that we cover in today's video. The Ursaluna is going to be level 100, have the Flame Orb, and Terra Typing will be normal. You can change that for ground if you like. It's not really imperative. You're not going to be terrestrializing too much in these raids. So with a moveset of Belly Drum, Headlong Rush, Crunch and Facade with an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 Attack and an Adamant Nature with the rest dumped in either Defense or Special Defense with the ability Guts and the item Flame Orb. So with the Flame Orb, you'll activate your Guts ability after the first turn 
expediting your attack apart even more and with the belly drum on top of that you're going to have a really easy time dealing with the blissey the next one up like i said if you don't have access to ursa luna because of pokemon legends arceus you can use ursa ring it is just as good a pokemon going into these blissey raids as the ursa luna and it is going to be level 100 again with the flame orb a very similar build with a normal terror typing here and a move set of belly drum crunch close combat facade with an ev spread of 252 hp 252 attack the rest dumped in special defense with the guts ability again playing off that flame orb item that we attached to the ursa ring for that guts ability to be activated but these are the two builds that i would recommend going in to the blissey raid and once you've found it it is going to be as easy as this so once you've found one of the blissies you can just challenge away we'll go with the ursa luna in this one but like i say the ursa ring is just going to be as an effective pokemon it's going to be a two turn raid and you're going to have no problem Obviously, depending on the different terror types, you can rely on the different attacking options that you've got access to. But between the ground, the normal and the dog type attacks, you should have good coverage for pretty much everything that you're going to come up against type wise in these terror raids. So when you come into the raid, Bliss is going to pose no threat to you at all. First turn you're going to do is belly drum. It's as easy as that. That will max out your attack. At the end of the turn, you will also activate your Flame Orb ability. It will burn you and activate that Guts ability. And you can see here, Bliss is going to have an array of different attacks, one of them being Heal Pulse and kind of helping you out as well. So like I say, it poses no threat. The next turn, what you can do is just pick whichever move you want. We'll go with Facade here. This should be enough with the Guts boost to knock it out. And we do get a critical hit as well to boot, but we didn't really need that so that's as easy as it is and then we can just collect the rewards and move on to the next spotlight terror event to kind of farm these items you can catch it if you want but i never really worry about it because we're doing that many of them through this and you can see here the item drops we've got five ghost terror shard five fighting normal and ground and a bunch of level up candies and rare candies as well to kind of boot so we've got a lot of items a really great raid to go into and farm items that are very useful for you in the game for training up your Pokemon. And if you come onto your map and all of the spotlight terror raids you've looked at, there's no more blissies and that's specifically what you're hunting, then you can use the little trick where you're hitting your home menu, coming down into your system settings, then down into system and down into date and time. Just make sure that your clock via the internet setting is set to off and then come down into date and time. Don't change anything in here and just toggle through the options. Click that OK button, then hit your home menu back into the game and all of the dents should respawn. So this one is the Hatterene and just as an example to show you that the Ursa Luna and the Ursa Ring are going to be just as effective against these raids as the Blissey will jump into it might take one additional turn but you should be able to do this in three turns to make this very easy to run through and the same can be said with Grimmsnarl as well if you just follow the kind of same setups as we're doing like I say the Ursa Luna and the Ursa Ring have pretty similar setup options Ursa Luna does have better defenses overall so it is going to be able to take attacks that little bit better but both can perform pretty evenly across both these terror raid events. So as you can see, coming in against the Hatterene, this is going to be Grass Terror Type 1. And the first turn, as always, is just going to be going for that Belly Drum. So we max out our attacks. And at the end of the turn, the Flame Orb will activate, activating that Guts ability, giving us just a bit of an extra attack buff as well. And then to make sure that we pick up the Knockout onto the Hatterene this next turn, what we do is go for an Attack Cheer, an All Out Cheer, and that will just ensure that when we do go for the attack the next turn after this, we will be picking up the knockout onto the Hatterene. So you don't really need to worry too much about the Hatterene kind of knocking you out. You're gonna take a bit of damage, of course, but it's not gonna be hitting you for crazy damage. Not this early on in the game. You can see it is gonna get off a calm mind here, but not too threatening. We don't really need to worry about it because the next turn, it is gonna be going down. So we can see here, we have set ourselves up the psychic train coming out from the hat and we'll be able to launch off whatever move is more appropriate in this situation for the terror type for here we'll go for that facade it has taken a bit of chip already but even if it is close to full hp at this point you will guarantee the knockout onto the hatterene and you can see three turns that's all it is it's very very straightforward making this easy easy to farm for the items i'm not going to catch it and we're just going to have a look at all of these rewards that we do get including those level up candies so we've got lots of level up candies some hp iron and zinc get some terror shots to boot as well and all of these so we do get double 
the, the calciums and uh, we get a lot of level up candies as well so kind of expecting a few more so this is the grim snarl so we'll go into this one the grim snarls are the most annoying one out of the three in this spotlight terror raid and one that i probably do ignore quite a lot of the time you can take it down in three turns like you do the hatterene it's pretty much the same setup going belly drum then the all-out attack cheer and whatever attack will hit it for good damage super effective is even better but if it's neutral then just choose whatever this is a normal type so we probably would go with that facade going into this one i generally coming into these spotlight terror raid events have been concentrating a lot more down on blissey just because they give out the terror shards which i find a little bit more valuable going into these raids to farm for at least and also they do give out level up candies as well but the hatterene is a nice one if you do come across it and a quick one to kind of get through grim snarl is a little bit annoying like i said has got access to reflect it can throw it up at any time in this match as well um and it does hit a little bit harder having access to those more powerful attacks in play rough and false surrender and it does get access to bulk up as well so second turn we go for that all out cheer here and potentially set ourselves up we'll see if this grim snarl sneaks in a reflect or not but like i say they can be a little bit more annoying to deal with um than the other two in particular the blissey and one of the reasons why i kind of tend to ignore these ones if i do come across them but if you want yeah and you can see here it is always going to get that reflect up on the turn just before you go for the attack and we can go for that should we go for the facade yeah we'll go for the facade here we'll see it might be close i don't think we're going to pick up the knockout though yeah very close though and now because you miss the knockout we're close to getting knocked out ourselves it's going to set up a shield it's going to nullify the stats on its side of the field going to nullify the stats on our side of the field making this take a little bit longer and when you think how quick it is to run through the hatterene and the blissey spotlight raids it's just not worth your time to go after the grim snarl for the extra time that it takes to kind of take it down so it's more beneficial just to kind of skip these ones i think personally uh to go forward with but it's entirely up to you you know if you are coming up against a grim snarl and you've got a super effective attack into it here so say if it was maybe a steel type then you can hit it with that headlong rush you will pick up the knockout onto it after that all-out attack here, even after the reflect. So there are situations where it is quick, just most of the time it's not that quick at all. And you're going to get the same item drops as you would for the Hatterene, which guaranteed to take three turns. So that's all I mean. And you can see here, we've got a bunch of the rewards again, like we've got for the Hatterene. And then we can move on to the next Spotlight Terror Raid event. Between the Ursa Ring and the Ursa Luna, you're gonna have an easy time going into these raids over the next two weeks just to be able to accumulate as many level up candies and terror shards as you want and then all you need to do come onto your map and uh, find the next one and go from there so friends that is everything for today's video of course the event is running for an extended period of time you can really take advantage of this when you've got a little bit of time to stock up on all of these really valuable items that are going to allow you to train your pokemon pretty freely and of course get them ready for when that teal mask drops in a little under four weeks time but before that, we've got to look forward to that Mewtwo Terror Raid event. If you've got Pokemon that you have been using effectively going into this raid, do let me know down in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you've been using to farm these items and make this super easy going forward. But I hope you found the suggestions in today's video helpful. If you have, do drop a like and make sure you do hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content here on the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy the Spotlight Terror Raid event and beating all those blisses. And I'll see you all in another video very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.